Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back. So I'm gonna be doing my second update for my Pan That Palette project. So I decided to work on the Huda Beauty Emerald Obsessions, which is a monochromatic green palette for this year and I've been doing bi-monthly updates. So my last one was in March, so it's about time for my second one. So I'll have my playlist for this project linked down below if this is the first time you're seeing me or my face or any of my videos and you wanna catch up. But just to do a really quick recap, so when I started this project, you could definitely tell that I had used this palette and I did have some decent dips on a bunch of shades, but I didn't have any pans yet. So I used the palette 14 times between my introduction and my first update in March, and I managed to hit two very, very baby pans. And then I have used the palette an additional 14 times since March, and I have hit two new pans and expanded the pans on at least one of the shades that I had panned as of the last update. So my palette is now looking like this, and I have, as you can see, four of the nine shades panned, which is definitely a good start. So this has been going a little bit more slowly than I initially thought it would because the pans are quite shallow, but the formula on the shimmers makes them a little bit more difficult to pan because most of the shimmers are a pretty creamy formula, so it's not as squishy as, say, a Super Shock Shadow where it kind of moves around in the pan, but these definitely do move a little bit, especially because I find for best color payoff, I prefer to apply them with a finger. So I found that it took way longer than I thought it would to hit pan on some of these just because you would sort of go in there and things would move, but I did eventually get there, so I'm pretty happy about that. I also want to say that I do generally like to actually wear this palette when I'm filming, but I am at my parents' place for the next couple of weeks, at least until lockdown restrictions are lifted and I find out if I have a stress fracture or not. So those two things are not related, but they're related to my ability to do things like buy my own groceries. Um, I am channeling the vibes of my palette today rather than putting this on my eyes because we live in the country and there are lots of bugs and all the bugs think I'm delicious and I'm pretty sure that something bit my eyelid and it's now turned into a little bit of an allergic reaction. So I've been trying to like knock off the eyeshadow until that heals because every time I think it's almost there and I put eyeshadow on, it gets back to being gross. So I'm just sort of laying off it. It's not an infection, I'm just, I just have sensitive skin and I've historically always been more reactive to bug bites than the average human even though I am allegedly grown. That is one of those things that I have not grown out of. So anyways, we're, we're going for the vibes of this palette with my shirt today, unfortunately. Um, so I think that might put a damper on my ability to use this palette over the next couple of weeks. Let's go through the palette and I'll talk a little bit about how things have been going for each shade. I am going to start tracking uses on each shade going forward. Normally I've only been reaching, tracking the number of times that I've reached into this palette and generally when I use this palette because I don't have anything similar in my collection, if I am using this I am usually using mostly this so using it to build a full look but I am going to start tracking uses on individual shades just because for some of these I do want to know roughly how long it takes to hit pan and stuff like that. So, and I think that makes it a little bit more interesting for you guys as well if there's, you know, some data because I know a lot of people like the numbers and stuff. So I am going to start doing that. I also realized that I forgot to take progress photos in March, but I did do that before sitting down. So I do have like actual decent progress photos for at least the intro and this update that aren't just a screen grab. So my apologies, but I think I'm gonna try to remember to do that going forward bad YouTuber that I am. This palette, let's talk about it. So I have been trying to use this glitter topper shade a lot more. I've been really enjoying it recently. I've been, I was kind of hesitant to use it at first because I am kind of scared of like chunky glitters. Like I just don't like them and they don't really fit with, I guess, the vibe that I'm going for, whatever that is. But I do find that this, when applied with the finger, breaks up really nicely and you can get like a sort of diffused sparkle. So I've been using this quite a bit. It's also nice to help sort of give brighten up some of the darker shades in the palette. So I find that if I use this and then top it over like this middle shade right here, it brightens it up a couple of shades and just makes it look a little bit less dramatic. I mean, as less dramatic as you can be when you're wearing that color of green but it does add a little bit of a brightening effect and it's really pretty, so I do definitely want to use this more because I've definitely been sort of sleeping on it and uh, no longer. So this is, I think, the biggest change that you can see. I kind of forgot how 
little the pan was in this as of the last update, but then when I was looking at comparison photos when I was taking a screen grab, I was like, oh, that had like the tiniest little pinprick of a pan and it's now definitely a decent sized pan, so I do feel good about that. And I don't know if I'll be able to like fully finish the shade by the end of the year, but I think that I could definitely get a lot more use out of it because I do use the shade pretty often, so definitely happy with how this one is going. And then this was one that I was very excited to hit pan on. This took me way longer than I thought it was going to, but I think that's just because, like I said, these are sort of a creamier formula and they do kind of shift around in the pan. So it took me a while to sort of get through the last layer and actually see pan, but once I did, I had a pretty decent sized pan. So this is one shade that I think that I could definitely finish by the end of the year because I love this shade. It's deep enough that it doesn't look weird on my skin tone, but it just gives like a nice light pop of green without being too dramatic. So definitely I think appropriate for the classroom and the lab. So we'll definitely continue to use this a lot more going forward. It's really good for this time of year where it's spring-like but still a little bit cool and we haven't gotten to full sun and summer and all that good stuff. I don't think you can see much use on this guy. I did have this panned, if you can, I hope you can see as of the last update, mainly because if you couldn't tell by the shape of the dip, I've been using it as an eyeliner. It hasn't been working super well as an eyeliner. It's kind of crumbly and I also have difficult lids. I have the eyelids of a 60 year old. So generally if it's not a sort of wetter sort of gel formula or a liquid liner, it's very hard to get things to go on smoothly on me. And I think the texture of this is just sort of not working on my eyelids. So I think going forward, I'm just going to focus on using this maybe occasionally as an eyeliner, especially if I'm putting this over matte, I think it might work better. It kind of slides around over a shimmer, but use this as a lower lash line or to sort of deepen up the outer third. But yeah, I'm not really too fussed on trying to like finish this, although I do definitely want to use it more than I have been because I kind of panned it and then pretty much ignored it <laughs> over the last update, which is unfortunate. And then this center center shimmer shade was one of my focus shades for the last month. I was hoping to maybe pan it. As you can tell, that definitely did not happen. However, I have made a really good discovery on how to make this work that I think will allow me to use this more over the next couple of months slash rest of the year. The shade is kind of the dud in the palette. It doesn't pay off as deep as it looks in the pan. And so far I found that even with packing it on, or using it with a wet brush. The only way that I found to get this to pay off the color that it is in the pan is to use it over a glitter glue. So now that I figured that out, I think I'll be able to get a lot more use out of this. And it is gorgeous over glitter glue, but it is very difficult to work with over a regular primer because it doesn't really stick and it goes on sheer. And then because it does have little chunks of uh, glitter in it, that kind of will end up all over your face, which is something that I'm not really a fan of. So yeah, I do definitely want to use this more and I, I don't know if I can have this panned as of the next update, but I'm going to at least try to use it more and just see how far I can get. I know this is a crumblier sort of texture and those do te tend to pan a little faster, so I'm gonna give it my best shot. And I was also hoping to maybe have pan on this guy right here. As you can see, not really, but it does have a slightly deeper dip going on. I generally tend to use this pretty sparingly as like sort of an outer third shade or along the lower lash line, but I have gotten more into using it as a one shadow kind of look recently and I find that this has enough enough depth to it that I can use it as a one shadow and it doesn't look weird, whereas I've tried to do it with this matte mint sort of as a blown out one shadow pastel look a la Kelly Gooch, but it doesn't really work super well with my undertones. I find that I can only use pastels in conjunction with something deeper. If I try to do an entirely pastel look, I just look kind of, I don't know, sick, I guess. So yeah, but I definitely have been enjoying using this sort of matte emerald green shade. And again, I don't know if I'll be able to pan it in two months as of the next update, but I am going to definitely commit to using it more. And this guy right here, this is definitely, I think you can see still a slight increase in usage, but definitely not a ton. This is kind of a difficult shade to work with because it is, generally I would want to use something a little bit lighter as a transition shade. And I found that trying to use this with a fluffy brush, it can kind of look a little bit muddy on my skin tone, but I find that it looks fine if I sort of build it up to closer to what it actually lo looks like in the pan, I can make it work that way. But yeah, I can't diffuse it and make it look a little bit lighter the same way I can with say the shade right here 
which can be sheared out. This does not look good sheared out on me, but I do definitely, I think now that I figured out how to make this work, I will definitely be using it more. I don't see myself reaching for the grungier sort of olives in this palette really a whole lot until the summer. I'm kind of like feeling <laughs> the top two rows more now, but I know that that will shift seasonally, especially as we move towards late summer, early fall. But yeah, so I haven't really been using these a ton, but these do also work quite well with my one of the shades in my pan those shadows. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I do want to get a little bit more use out of these, even if they're not my focus shades over the next round. Then we have this guy. I think you can see a little bit more of usage on this. Generally, I use this with a smaller sort of more dense brush, like a shader brush, just to pack color on certain parts of the lid rather than using it as an all over lid shade. So I don't know, I don't know how long it's going to take me to pan this. Um, this has the same sort of creamy shimmer shade that some of the other ones do. So I imagine that even if the dip goes pretty quickly, getting the last little bit to pan will probably take a while. But like I said, I'm not really focusing too hard on trying to pan this ASAP and I will probably shift more towards using this during the fall. But for right now, I'm just trying not to completely ignore it. And last but not least, we have a pan. So yeah, I did manage to pan this gold shade, which I am really happy about. It definitely took longer than I was expecting it to, but I am happy to see pan. Mostly I got this, I got there by using this with a really tiny brush as an inner corner highlight and or as a halo eye with just the bottom, the bottom three. However, I think I am going to be sort of stepping away from this gold shade now that I've panned it because I've come to the conclusion that despite trying to use it in a bunch of different ways, including as a face highlighter, that it just doesn't work super well with my skin tone. As somebody with olive undertones, sometimes pastels and lighter shades can kind of wash you out a little bit, and I find that this shade is no exception. So even though it blends really nicely with that olive shade next right next to it I find that together they just kind of don't make me look I guess healthy I don't know I just don't feel like it's a flattering shade on my skin tone so I have managed to pan it and I have figured out that it's just not working for me so I will probably continue to use it here and there as like an inner corner highlight for a pop of gold because I have been really enjoying that and maybe occasionally as a center eyelid shade especially with that sort of emerald shimmer right here I think I have used the two of those as a halo eye and it does work pretty well so I might continue doing that but I think I'm just going to focus on the other eight shades and not really try to hit any more goals on a shade that just isn't flattering on me. I think sometimes you have to buy things and put them on your face to realize that oh yeah like pastel golds are just like not working on me so that's fine at least I know and I feel okay with deciding to step back from that one because I have eight other shades in the palette that do work well on me. So that's kind of my recap. I think I mentioned earlier going forward, I am going to be tracking uses on individual shades because I think it would be nice to have data and I know a lot of people like having numbers too. So I will be doing that going forward as well as trying to take decent progress photos. So yeah, um, so I do actually have a few more looks to show you. I remembered to actually photograph more looks this round. I also, um, I'm at my parents' place because we are in lockdown. I was supposed to be here for my dad's birthday and stay for like a week or two. And then some people from Ontario decided it would be chill to skip quarantine and then host a party. And now the entire province is on lockdown. So that's fun. Um, so I'm definitely here for longer than I expected to be, which is hardly the end of the world. I'd rather be here than locked up in my apartment, but it is what it is. So I brought this palette and the mini retro. So I've been wearing a lot of green and getting a lot more creative so I don't get bored. So I do have three looks to show you. And if you see me looking over here, it's because I have them pulled up on my laptop. All right, so first off is I rest my case about, about that gold color. So I did a halo eye using only the last three shades. So I used the matte olive all over the crease and then used the olive shimmer as an outer and inner third and then just popped the gold on the inner third and uh, inner corner. And again, I think these shades blended really nicely. I think execution looks good, but I feel like this just does not look quite right on my skin tone and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Moving on. So this was a one shadow look I did with that matte emerald green and I just sort of used it all over the lid up into the, the crease and also along the lower lash line, topped it off with that glitter topper and then just put a little bit of the gold as an inner corner highlight. Thought this was really fun, would definitely do again. All right, so this was one I stumbled across a video of, I think Melissa Alatorres talking about a sort of different eyeshadow 
technique application and so I wanted to borrow it and see how it would work with this palette and so I just used the matte emerald color as my matte obviously as my matte and then I used the sort of lighter mint shimmer as a center third and then I just popped a little bit of the glitter topper over top this was really fun I unfortunately have an eye shape that does not lend itself well to doing winged liner because I have a couple of folds at my outer lids so I generally will tend to wing out my eyeshadow shape to sort of give that lifted effect without actually having to do a winged liner so I thought that this was really fun really pretty and I've been playing around with it with other shadows too and so far so good I also like it because it brings the shimmer up onto your lid anyway and as somebody with hooded lids my shimmer is going to end up there anyway and last but not least I did a palette bingo that I filmed and then deleted the footage because I realized that when I was trying to do my eye makeup with this tiny little mirror I had it in, in front of my face the entire time so not the most usable footage but I used these I got these two and these two and then the glitter topper wherever it is and so I just used the greens on the outer two-thirds brown on the outer thirds, mirrored the same thing with the mattes on the lower lash line, and just topped it off with the glitter topper, and I thought it was super fun. This was also the first time that I used that emerald over a glitter glue, and it made the world of difference. I feel like I've said this in my last three videos where I've talked about having a glitter glue, but it has been such a game changer, especially for stubborn shimmer shades. I've also decided to make the Emerald Obsessions my palette of the month for May because I'm a May baby, and Emerald is the May gemstone, birthstone, so I am definitely seeing myself getting a little bit more use out of this once my eye situation settles down and I can actually wear eyeshadow without setting things off again. So I foresee a lot more green in my future. I'm also doing online classes that are like fully asynchronous, so I have a lot more creative license to do with my eyeshadow what I want. That I think is going to be fun. So hopefully I will have some more progress for you guys in July. And depending on how many pans I have, I may decide to switch to monthly updates. Then I may not. We'll sort of just see how things are going and assess. I hope you are staying safe and sane and healthy wherever you are in the world. If you enjoy my content, I upload new videos every Tuesday and sometimes on Saturdays. So if you enjoy beauty and panning content and possibly a dash of conscious consumerism and science in there, consider hitting that subscribe button and hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Bye!